beautiful girl stands in my way. We're working with Andy Serkis, who you may know as Gollum from Lord of the Rings or Kong from King Kong. He, he doesn't only play one of the characters in the game, King Bohan, he's also our dramatic director. The job of dramatic director um, has been, it's quite wide ranging. When you're casting, you have the conceptual artwork, so there's a, there's a pre-designed way that the character is going to finally manifest itself on screen and yet you're trying to find the souls of these characters. Stop playing with her and kill the wretched girl! Oh, you poor little thing. <laughs> Look! <laughs> we cast a lot of theatrical actors because we knew that they had what the game needed, which was bold, interesting characters. Initially, I was a little bit um, confused because uh, I don't understand much about the technology. You're very aware that you've got 60 cameras at all times picking up everything from every angle. I mean, there's no place to hide. And you think, well, I, so I'm a series of dots then. What they are doing is building up an entire virtual map of you and the emotional input and everything that you're giving them. And once you realize that, suddenly you think, well, this is a magic suit because once I have this ridiculous outfit on, I can purely play and just have as much fun as I can possibly get out of it. Show me some action! <sighs> the interesting thing about motion capture is how liberating it is for actors because you can play anything. You're not restricted to your own physicality, your own face. You are allowed, using this medium, to go anywhere. Motion capture seems to really capture the essence of the movement so much more than what a normal camera usually can. Technology nowadays does allow you to, to sculpt in the computer very similar to, to traditional sculpting. When you've seen the actors going through all these extremes of raising eyebrows and frowning, that kind of thing, we, we have to take that data and do versions of that ourselves. An angry face without these kind of wrinkle marks here on the nose and everything just isn't an angry face. It's only really with the PlayStation 3 development to allow us to have so many shapes to, to represent the skin, how it slides, how it wrinkles and creases. Stuart takes photos of us and photos of the animation of the character and superimposes them and then takes what he wants of us and what he wants of the character, which works really nicely with like uh, skin tone and things like that, so that then there's, there's kind of an essence of, of you. What is your purpose, Noriko, exactly? Hmm? To die valiantly, to shed blood for a worthless cause, perhaps? Well, whatever it is, it's over. If this desire to create a new direction in gaming is to, is to be successful, it's all got to be based around the, the emotional engagement of, of actors and performers and the characters they're playing. I hope people look back at this period in gaming and see this period as, as the time where games became a dramatic art form and almost vindicate us all for working in this medium for so many years. Kill her! Wipe her out! From the very beginning we wanted to create a huge cinematic experience. Part of that was to create amazing sound effects and foley. I think the sound effects are often the most overlooked area of game audio. They give the player the most information and the most connection with what the character's doing. We hired a foley artist and we used him to generate all kinds of different sound effects and sound materials. There's a little bit of everything here, meaning junkyardish. Every element you could possibly think of is here. Me and Marco have gone for runs out to flea markets and uh, big garbage dumps, and we look for things that would work for the video game. The best person to be attached to this project would be Marco. He's worked on hundreds and hundreds of films. This is just a small portion of the props that we have. We've got metal buckets, we've got shackles, water effects, any kind of clothing that might need rustles or different kinds of jackets different types of metal, gates, any kind of a sound we have. With a movie, you're starting with a little bit of something and then you either add to it 
or you sweeten something, or you replace it. With a, a video game, you need to do everything. If you don't make it, you don't have it. We get movies from Tom, and we'll put it up on the screen in the Foley room, and we'll play it back a few times and, and see the motions that she's doing. A lot of the times, they're not rendered completely, so we're dealing with some raw footage. And so I'll ask Tom, is she on stone, is she on dirt? We look at what is occurring in that actual movie, and we act out those sounds in front of a microphone. Nice. There'll be a list of things that we need to do. So if we have to run to a junkyard to find some big pieces of wood to throw around, or we have to run to a supermarket and buy some celery for bone breaks. I think a watermelon's a pretty overrated. A lot of people think they give you all this wonderful sound, but you hit a watermelon with a, a mallet and you get a, a half a second sound that doesn't have any kind of an implosion sound. Or well, we want something that sort of tears at the fiber of the item and just sort of rips it apart. Some of the more challenging things, I think, is some of the sword elements. The sword's not just a weapon. It's kind of a character in its own right. It's the thing that we want to use to make the player feel the most powerful. We brought swords to Heavenly Sword that we got from Crouching Tiger. In Crouching Tiger, we actually did a pass at the beginning where we used crowbars and bats and all these different things, and Ang Lee came in and goes, you know what, we need swords. A challenging part of the game is the variation. Tom will ask for uh, two or three different sword sounds. So if she's unsheathing her sword, there's going to be 20 or 30 of those sounds so that you don't hear the same sound 30 times in a row. There's a chain sequence that happens with her sword when she uses it throughout the game. It's unique to Heavenly Sword. We went out and bought as many chains as we could. Pulling back uh, the chains, throwing them around, jumping up and down. I think we even threw on a, a tape measure for the extension sounds that we had. PlayStation 3 is a surround sound environment. Most films don't even go that far. It just adds to the fantasy playing the game. Your senses are being pulled one way and another. We're trying to make it as an intense an experience as possible without making the player feel, whoa, that's, that's not real. The more challenging the sounds are, the happier we are. And if we can convey that in the game and everybody's happy, then we did our job. And, uh, and it makes it that much more exciting and happier.